All right, fantasy owners, we are now ready to dive into the guys that you want to avoid this week for your week 11 fantasy football matchups here on the Fantasy Football Stock Report. These are guys that were really kind of worried about this week. Maybe they're going to have a letdown week. And again, disclaimer, I could be wrong on some of these guys. Fantasy football is, is hard to predict. It's a tough game, um, but sometimes we get it wrong. Last week, I was wrong on Chris Johnson. I told a lot of you to, to really be wary on him. Even though I said you could, I couldn't afford to sit him, he had a big, big game against Miami, and, and Miami's defense has just kind of struggled of late. So that's the disclaimer. I was wrong on that one. I missed on that one. But usually when I do, I do a lot of homework before these, so usually on these guys, I have a pretty good sense of what's going to happen. With quarterbacks, it's pretty clear cut this week. This is going to be backup Sunday. In fact, the Monday night football matchup in the end is going to be a likely, in all likelihood a battle of backups because Chicago plays San Francisco and Jay Cutler and Alex Smith both were knocked out of the game last week because of concussions. Um, you know, so, so these guys are kind of all lumped in one together that you really want to avoid because they're likely not going to play. It's Cutler, it's Alex Smith, uh, it's, it's Michael Vick, uh, and Ben Roethlisberger, uh, who got knocked out of the um, Monday night game last week uh, we, they were debating all week long what what the extent of his injury was. Uh, first, we, you know, we heard everything from sprained shoulder to dislocated shoulder to you know something broken. We we didn't know what it was. We later found out that yes, it was a sprained shoulder, but it also was a lot worse because we they disclosed today that one of Roethlisberger's ribs was pressing on his aorta. I'm sorry, but anytime you say aorta, that means you sit. You you sit, you rest, you get that fixed right away, uh, as Mike Wilbon from PTI said earlier today. Uh, you, you just sit down. You, you don't play. So Roethlisberger has already been ruled out for this week. Now, there hasn't really been any, any other official statements regarding Vic or Cutler or Smith yet, but I doubt any three of them are going to play this week, especially with the NFL's concussion protocol. Uh, those new uh, standards kind of in effect. I don't think any of those three will play this week. So the question now is, obviously you're not starting any of these guys. Obviously you're, you're going to keep these guys on your bench reserved uh, if they're not playing. So then what do we make of their backups? What, what do we think of these guys that are going to have to immediately come in and take over these jobs? The, the backup that I think is going to do the best in, in place of their starter is Colin Kaepernick of San Francisco. This I watched this guy play in college at Nevada, and, and I tell you what, I was very impressed with not only his ability to throw the football, but to run as well. He is kind of that dual threat, dare I say, Tim Tebow-like quarterback who, who, can, who can do both running and passing. He is definitely very mobile and, and has shown even, even in mop-up time that he's, he, I mean, he's ran for touchdowns before as well. So he's definitely very, very capable. It, I, I think he's the, the kind of guy that maybe you want to grab this week. <clears throat> I like him as maybe a number two, number three option this week going up against the Bears. Granted, that, that is a tough matchup for any guy, but he's, I think he's going to have to make some plays somehow. And, and so that's the way I see Kaepernick this week. I like him the best. Um, I, I would think then maybe Foles would be your next best option for Philadelphia going up against the Redskins. Again, that's a real juicy matchup, but again, it's his first experience, so I think they're going to maybe use the ground attack a little more. I, I see Foles as maybe a sneaky number two if you're desperate uh, for a guy there. And then really with, with Jason Campbell and, and Charlie Batch, I don't know uh, about those two. They haven't been a, a really – or I'm not – sorry, not Charlie Batch. Um Byron Leftwich. I'm sorry, I picked the wrong quarterback. I still let Charlie Batch is in Pittsburgh, but um, but yeah, but Byron Leftwich and, and Jason Campbell. These guys really haven't seen the field in in years, and and I'm not really uh, sure what they're going to bring to the table. So really, I, I wouldn't really trust uh, putting these guys in your fantasy lamps right away until they've actually proven themselves in a game to see what they can do for their starters. Um, but definitely, I think you guys, I think you guys can trust Kaepernick and Foles as decent starting matchups this week. Uh, considering the matchups that they have. Uh, two other guys I don't like this week. I, I actually, surprisingly, and, I, and I'm probably going to be wrong on this one because of what he's been doing lately, I don't like Andrew Luck against New England. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't. This is his first time playing against the juggernaut that is the Patriots. And I really, and I, and I have this kind of fear 
deep in me that he's going to have these first-time jitters. And I know everyone now is going to bomb me and say, oh, well, he beat Green Bay. Yeah, well, that was, that was I hate to say a little bit fluky, but I feel like it kind of was because that was the game after they found out that Coach Pagano was diagnosed with leukemia and they were playing, you know, Chuck Strong for him. And they have all season now since that happened. And they've been on a tear lately. But come on, this is in New England. It's at the Razor. It's at Gillette. This is in Foxborough. This is Luck's first, you know, well, I would say first, but I mean, really real taste of a really strong powerhouse team out outside of the NFC. This is in the AFC. This is in the Colts' own conference. And so, and New England has always been a bugaboo in the Colts side. So I'm just kind of tempering my expectations a little bit. If Luck still is a good number two game, great. But I, I just don't see a big, big week from him this week. So I'm really kind of tempering things on him just because this is his first taste. And, and Ryan Tannehill, again, I talked about Miami and how they've really hit the wall these last few weeks. Yeah, it's a great matchup against Buffalo, but then again, I don't know if you can really trust the Dolphins at this point. Uh, Reggie Bush got in the doghouse last week, and now we're wondering what his role is going to be going for. Excuse me, forward is Daniel Thomas going to be more involved? We don't know. So really, the Dolphins O and D are a mess right now, and I wouldn't touch those with a ten foot pole right now. Uh, real quick, going now, going into the running backs. Um, again, this should be a no shocker. Uh, Name just well, not really, but just because of the matchup. Again, um, normally in any situation, you start Frank Gore, and probably you can ill afford to sit him based on the options that are out there. But again, he's going up against the Bears this week, and running backs against the Bears obviously have not had much success this year. And in the past, even Gore has struggled when facing Chicago. So I, I, I don't think he's going to have you know maybe he'll hit double digits this week. Obviously, he's going to get a lot of the work probably as as normal. But I don't know if he's going to maybe even hit double digits. I'm not so sure. I can only see him as a number two option this week um, just because of the fact this is a tough matchup. Obviously, like I said, you probably ill afford to start to, to sit him. You probably can't. But just temper your expectations this week going up against that tough Bears D. Other guys I don't like, I've said the Dolphins D has been on the downhill slope, but I – it's hard for me to think that they would be carved up like this two straight weeks, maybe even three straight weeks. I I don't think that – I think the Dolphins are going to come up with this mentality that's, that's like, hey, we can't get fooled again. Okay, we, we can't let these big-time, big-name running backs – just go off on us like this. I don't think you know. I don't think people were expecting Chris Johnson to do what he did last week. So now Fred Jackson of Buffalo has already been ruled out for this game with a uh, with a with a concussion himself, a head injury. So he is already out. But I'm not really high on C.J. Spiller either because I think the Dolphins are just going to be ready for him because they don't want to have happen what happened to them last week with Chris Johnson. So I can only see C.J. Spiller as a number two option this week. But if you if not, if I'm wrong on this one, I I won't be surprised. But I'm just thinking the Dolphins are going to come with this, this mentality, thinking we we can't we really can't have this happen two weeks in a row, can we? So really, but obviously if you're Fred Jackson and you're sitting him, he's been ruled out for the game. Um, the Giants are on a bye this week, but don't get too crazy yet on Andre Brown. Yeah, he's been scoring a lot of points of late, but he's still second fiddle to Ahmad Bradshaw until Bradshaw goes down again. He had his moments early in the year. Excuse me. When Bradshaw got hurt, and, and that's fine. He's a decent runner, but uh, I, but mostly it's just for garbage time stuff. So I wouldn't get too sold on him yet. Um, Willis McGahey for Denver. I mean, he's really been hit or miss this year. Only had six fantasy points last week, and yeah, they're going up against the Chargers. But you know, he's been hit or miss this year. You probably can ill afford to sit him. Also, I see him as a number two with upside, but I'm kind of worried about him. Let's see what happens there. And Panther running backs against Tampa Bay, I, I, you really can't trust either of them at this point. They're nothing but desperate number threes, both Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams. I can't trust either of these guys at this point. Um, I think Cam Newton's going to throw a lot against Tampa Bay this week. Uh, the guy, you know, do his guy, Steve Smith, maybe even Brandon LaFell gets involved. Greg Olson will certainly be involved. So um, I, I don't, I just, just can't trust these guys this week. Um, running back, or not run, I just did running back, sorry. <laughs> Wide receivers, um, until he's consistent, I'm just not sold. The guy that I'm not sold on this week, although the matchup is juicy, 
and 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 again, you know, maybe I could be wrong, but I I really I I, I don't know how it could be. Darius Hayward Bay of Oakland. Um, I still, you know, Daenerys Moore still gets more of the work. He still gets a lot of the throws from Carson Palmer. And and, and I think, you know, it, someone's got to be left out in the fold. And I think it's going to be Hayward Bay this week. I only see him as a number three guy because until he's more consistent, until he has plenty of, of weeks like what he had last week, I can't really rely on him as a full-time starter yet. So I only see him as a number three option. I don't like Michael Crabtree against Chicago this week. Um, uh, again, I think Kaepernick's going to utilize the run more. I don't think he's going to throw a whole lot. Uh, I only see him as a number two, number three guy. Don't count on Donald Jones of Buffalo against Miami. Yeah, he had 13 points last week, but he's way too inconsistent. Don't consider him. Um, again, Giants on a bye. You're obviously sitting Hakeem Nix, but he's been so disappearing and inconsistent of late. Uh, he could be falling off fantasy radars pretty soon. Um, and again, the quarterback issues, Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin with Philadelphia. Yeah, Foles might find them a lot, but again, I really kind of tempered expectations with them. I see them both as number two, number three plays this week. I don't think they're as elite as they have been in the past this week uh, with Vickett quarterback. So just kind of tempered expectations on those guys. Finally, real quick, tight ends. Again, kind of the same thing. Um, I don't know what we make of Heath Miller this week, but I wouldn't start him this week because usually – with Ben Roethlisberger, he's always usually getting the ball thrown his way, putting up big numbers. He only had four fantasy points last week. That was probably the result of the fact that Ben had to leave the game early. That usually spells trouble for, for Miller. I only see him as a number two, number three option this week. It's going to be, you know, wondering how many times left which is actually going to throw him the ball. Um, Kyle Rudolph of Minnesota is on a bye this week, so obviously you're not starting him. But he did have 12 fantasy points last week and got a touchdown. So the big question with Rudolph going forward is, is he going to be that relevant fantasy tight end again that we saw earlier in the year? It'll be interesting to see what happens in Minnesota. Um, and real quick, a couple more guys. Um, Dallas Clark of Tampa Bay, you don't want to get too crazy on him yet. He did have a touchdown last week, but he's a desperate number three. He doesn't get a whole lot of targets in Tampa Bay. Yeah, the matchup's great with Carolina, but don't get too crazy on him. Uh, Tony Moiaki of the Chiefs, again, not another one you want to get too crazy on. Had six points last week, but he was only targeted three times in the whole game, so that's kind of fluky. Um, and, and Brandon Myers of Oakland. He, you might have trusted this guy in the last few weeks with the Oakland offense going off the way it was, but he's questionable with a concussion this week. A lot of guys with concussions. He might not play this week, so you might want to sit Brandon Myers and find better options this week if you're hurting at tight end. All right, guys, that's it. Those are the guys that I don't like for Week 11. Don't forget to check out the 5 to Ride video if uh, this is your first video that you're seeing for the week. Uh, and don't forget to check out the Facebook Notes link uh, for the guys for all my details on the guys uh, that I uh, like and don't like for the week. Good luck in Week 11. I uh, hope you guys are going for wins. Wins is what we want here for the Fantasy Football Soccer Report, and we will do it all again next week to get you victories in Week 12. Take care, and God bless. Thanks, guys.